when you can't get together with your friends to play D&D. Don't worry, there's an easy solution. Just play D&D online. During the current situation, I haven't been able to get a hold of certain materials that I was trying to get in order to work on some projects that I had coming up. And so I've had to shift things around in my video schedule a little bit. So for this video, I'm going to be talking about how to play D&D online. There are several ways to play D&D online, and I'm going to try to cover most of them in this video. I'm also going to be uploading a second video with an example session of playing on Roll20. The link for that video should be in one of the top corners. So what are your options when it comes to playing D&D online? That can change a little bit depending on your situation, so let me outline what some of those might be. Situation 1. You're from a group that gets together regularly to play, and now you have to move online or else you just can't play at all. Situation 2. You're from a group that gets together regularly, but your friends don't want to start playing online. In that case, you're going to have to find another game to join. Situation 3. You're new to playing D&D, and you want to use an online game as an introduction. So let's take a look at situation number 1. If you're a DM who wants to shift to playing online, you're in luck. You have plenty of options. You could play 100% theater of the mind style where you don't have battle maps and minis and everything is done without any visual references. Everything is 100% in the minds of the players. If this is the style you want to play, you can use Skype, Facebook Messenger, Google Hangouts, Discord, or any other type of voice or video chat app that there is. There are plenty of options and most of them are free, so take advantage of that. If you don't want to have to go without using battle maps and minis, then there are a couple more options. First, if the DM has the capability, they could stream the usual setup from their home, and then they can just control everything on the map and the players can tell them what they want to do. Secondly, and the method that I would recommend, is using a virtual tabletop. Two of the most popular ones are Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds. Fantasy Grounds is paid for and Roll20 is free. At least most of the features on Roll20 are free. Because of that, Roll20 is the one that I use. There are also other free virtual tabletops out there. I found a list of a bunch of them on BoardGameGeek.com, and I'll link to that in the description. Now let's have a look at situation number two. If this is your situation and you're from a group that doesn't want to play online, but you still want to play, you're going to have to find a new online group. If this is your case, there are plenty of forums where you can find games to join. There are threads with groups looking for players, players looking for groups, and so on. I'll be posting links to some of those forums down below as well. If you're specifically looking to play on Roll20, they have a Join Game button. If you click on that, you'll get a list of games that are ongoing or just starting up that you can join. These games will have some tags that kind of lay out some of the specifics of that particular game. When you see these tags, one of the ones you're going to notice is Pay to Play. This is quite common online, where the person running the game, usually the GM, charges a small fee for every session. This is usually to help pay for things like subscriptions to premium services, uh, source books, and other types of things that cost money, or just as a way to make something off of the amount of time that they put in preparing the sessions, or just some of the prep work that goes into it, because it is quite a lot of work. Pay-to-play games are not unique to Roll20 in any way. You'll find those on forums or anywhere else that you're looking online. Even some of the live groups will have the same thing. If you're in Situation 3, where you're a new player looking for a game to help introduce you to D&D, I would recommend looking for games that specifically have tags such as uh, New Players Welcome or um, Mostly New Players, things like that. As long as you're upfront about the fact that you're new and you're going to need some help, usually it's okay. The GM can then determine if you're going to be a good fit for the game, and they'll also know if they're going to have to help you out a little bit more. When you're playing online, it is a little bit harder to kind of get a read on people's body language, um, the pauses in conversation are generally a little longer, even when everyone knows what they're doing. So it's a little bit harder usually for the GM to know if you need help. Uh, so don't be shy of asking for help from them or from the other players. Because of that, this might be a little bit more of a difficult way to learn the game, but as long as you power through it and you're willing to learn, um, you put some effort into your role playing and all that, you should be okay. And that's it for this video. I know it's a little bit of a short one, I was going to actually include the example session of uh, Play on Roll20 at the end of this video, but I decided maybe it'd be a little bit better if I left them separate. Anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Leave your thoughts down in the comments, and stay safe. <laughs>